This is questions 51 through 60 from the release questions from the state of California for chemistry CSTs. Okay? We're looking at question one, which has been a difficult problem for all classes. And what I'm trying to point out on the reasoning on this is you need to know that water is a polar solvent. And hexane is a nonpolar solvent. Any oil is a nonpolar solvent. So up here where it says you want to find a nonpolar solute in a polar solvent, nonpolar will not dissolve in polar. So water being polar, naphthalene is the dude that is not going to dissolve in a polar solvent because he is non-polar. You may need to listen to this five to ten times <laughs> and, and say it to yourself slowly so that baby will click in. And that's why letter C is the correct answer. Okay? Now let's go on and let's come on. Here we go. Okay, technicians prepares the solution. He dissolves the 100 milliliters up here of distilled water. Uh, we're putting in KCL. Okay, the solution is by heating this stuff, okay? Well, we're going to add the KCL crystals. That's potassium chloride. It's a salt. Until no more KCL will dissolve. Okay, the heat helps us dissolve more. This was the extra credit assignment that we had for 15 points. The sodium acetate thing was the same as this question right here. And it, it has to do with a, I'm sorry, with, come on, I went brain dead. It has to do with a supersaturated solution, okay? It's supersaturated when it dissolves more than it could at room temperature. That's why they talked about the heating, okay? Heating the solution, like they say right here. Okay, she capped it, and when it cooled down, started to get cloudy. That cloudy is crystals forming in the, in the liquid. Okay, that is, at a lower temperature, the solubility of the salt, potassium chloride, decreases, and that's why you get crystals. And the crystals look like junk in the water. Okay? Yeah. I mean, sometimes, like with sodium acetate, they form nice, long, gorgeous crystals that look like ice when you're done. That's why they call it hot ice. And that's an exothermic reaction, by the way. But this guy is just, you know, it's going to redissolve. Okay, let's go on down. And number four was one that was missed by most classes. And in this guy, the solution is really fairly simple. Okay. What is big M? Yeah, what does it mean though? What over what? Moles over liters. Excellent. So we got a two moles over one liter. It's always one on the bottom in molarity. Okay. We're given five liters. That's our fraction. Does it go top or bottom? Uh, Why does it go on the top? So it'll cross out. Cancels. And of course one is on the bottom because this is not, this guy here is not an equality. It's not a ratio. It's just a number. And we put it over one so that we will recognize that the liters right there are going to cancel the liters over here. And the reason I'm doing the extra arrows in here like this is because people won't be able to see me when they watch this video. Okay? And let's go on and yeah, we're still going. Okay? And we're going to go to number seven. That was the next one. We had uh, about 38% of the class get this one. Uh, let's, let's look at it closely. This is they're saying an exothermic chemical process. Now, what is photosynthesis? Heat from the sun. Okay, it absorbs energy from the sun. That means 
that plants have to absorb energy. That's an endothermic reaction because heat's on the left in the equation. Combustion of gasoline. This is what drives your car. If you've ever seen hot rod races where they have manifolds that are sticking out the side of the, the, the front of the car and they don't have any mufflers, they go... <laughs> you got all this noise and really short exhaust pipes. Well, guess what? You see fire come out of those things if you're looking at these races at night. Yeah, they're just blowing out like crazy. Okay? That is an exothermic reaction, folks. Combustion of gasoline. Anytime you see combustion, that is a hot little dude. Okay? You strike a match. You have combustion. That's hot. Put your fingers over it. You're going to get burned. Okay? Because heat is being produced. Now, melting ice requires the water to go up in temperature. How does it get up in temperature? You have to absorb heat. It has to be in a warm room, something over, over zero degrees centigrade, or it won't melt. Okay, And evaporation of water, that won't happen without the input of energy either. If you've ever been out in the desert, especially a very dry desert, and it's a really hot day, it feels absolutely magnificent to get wet, doesn't it? Yeah. Why? Because the water is evaporating because it changes state, and it changes state because it requires energy to make that change of state. That means it's <laughs> sucking up the energy, and that cools off your body because it's taking the energy off the surface of your body and off the surrounding hot air, and so the water can evaporate. That's why this guy works. All right, let's go on to number eight. I'd like to do more of these if we have time, and I think we do. Okay, boiling point of liquid nitrogen. Have you ever seen horror movies where they have this fog? It's a, the fog is over the water, right? And they, you see little white chunks of stuff, that are, and there's bubbles coming up from it. That's dry ice. It's CO2. Dry ice, now listen, dry ice is at minus 60 degrees centigrade. It's not super cold, but it's pretty cold. And that stuff is below zero centigrade, and zero centigrade is where water from the air is going to condense. And when the water condenses, you wind up getting a cloud. That's what clouds are, is water in the atmosphere that has condensed to very, very, very small droplets, okay? And when those droplets come together and make bigger drops, eventually you get rain, yeah? If you want to look at my website, or no, go to YouTube, YouTube forward slash Owigger. Go down my videos, about, I don't know, 60 to 100, somewhere in there, down, you will find, and the pictures will be visible there, you'll see something that looks like a thermos. They call that a doer flask. It's just a fancy thermos. It's very high quality thermos. And that's what you keep liquid nitrogen in if you're going to be demonstrating it in the classroom. And we got a doer flask full of liquid nitrogen, and Mrs. Taylorson did some demonstrations at, during a lunch a couple, three years ago, and I shot videos of that. And that's on there. And you will see the, the, there's a cloud over the opening. You know, and it's just kind of coming out and dropping down over the side because the air is cold. Cold air goes down. So that is fun stuff. And that's something that you can see demonstrated pretty easily. Was there one or two others that you wanted to see? Yes. Number nine. Okay, let's go to number nine. Oh, this guy. Shame on you. <laughs> 0.4 joules over grams degrees centigrade. Have you seen that before? Yeah. yeah, you have. Okay, now, this guy you have to be careful of because you have to look at the unit of measure of what you're being asked to find. So you look at any of these guys and you see that the unit of measure is joules. So joules is what you want on top, right? Because that's going to be the answer. Yeah. All right, then we go to our, our stuff that was given. The first stuff that was given was 30 grams. Okay, so we put that in as a fraction. Does it go top or bottom? Okay, why is it on top? 
because we got to cross this guy out. Okay? And what do we do with this temperature change? We're going from 20 degrees centigrade to 60. So what do we have? That's 40 degrees. And that's the temperature change. You got confused by the two temperatures because you forgot how this stuff works, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. But this, this temperature change here is the, exactly a temperature change. It's not a, a, a specific temperature. So you've got 12, 1,200 times 0.4, okay? And that's 48, 480, okay? Remember, that's a decimal. Yeah, so it was letter C. Or 480 joules. 80, 80, there we go, joules. All right. Okay, that's it, folks. I hope that helps. If you need to listen to that again, you can get it on.